Well, greetings to you all on this wonderful day, on uh, this Wednesday, uh, and hope uh, hope you're doing well today. Uh, we have uh, had winter come back and hit us a little bit. It's snowing outside. It's supposed to snow a little bit today, uh, and so we're just we're kind of on that on that the cusp of when that weather is going to break eventually we get a taste of spring a taste back of winter and so on eventually uh, we're going to be in there completely but uh, today we get a little bit of snow and so anyway enjoy it it is beautiful out there i know some uh, uh, some of us are ready to be done with it but man it sure does look beautiful that fresh snow out there uh, but anyway, hope our power up finds you well. Be sure to hit that share button uh, as we begin this morning uh, and uh, look forward to looking into Job chapter number 40, Job chapter number 40. And uh, for those of you just coming on, be sure to like, share, comment, uh, all that good stuff there. And let's look at Job chapter number 40. Uh, just a quick reminder as well. Don't forget. Tonight, there's no rock, so no children's ministry tonight, uh, but we will still have our Bible study. So I would encourage you, please be in your place for that Bible study. And uh, we're going to actually uh, be finishing up. We've been studying through the book of Nehemiah. We're going to be finishing that up this week uh, or tonight. Uh, and so I hope that uh, you'll be here for that as we finish up our study of the book of Nehemiah. Okay, uh, and so that all begins at 6 o'clock, and hope to see you then. Here we go, Job chapter number 40. Uh, let's look. We're going to be introduced to a creature here uh, in just a couple of verses, uh, but let's look at verse number 10 first, uh, and then we'll get into uh, the behemoth is what we'll look at. So here we go, verse number 10. Remember, God is speaking here. He's asked Job several questions, and now he's getting uh, into now telling Job uh, what he should be doing. Okay, verse number 10. Deck thyself now with majesty uh, and excellent, excellency, and array thyself with glory and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath, and behold, every one that is proud uh, and abase him. Look on every one that is proud and bring him low. And tread down the wicked in their place, hide them in the dust together, and bind their faces in secret. Then will I also confess unto thee that thine own right hand can save thee. Uh, and so as we consider uh, these couple of verses, uh, we note the questions that, uh, that had been asked by God, saying, uh, uh, Hey, who are you to condemn the Lord? Who are you to question God? That who are you to uh, uh, bring God down and make yourself look good? Uh, he then challenges them uh, to be mindful of the prideful, as we see here uh, in verse number uh, number ten. We see we see that decking himself in majesty, excellency, arraying uh, thyself with glory and beauty. Uh, we see then at the end of verse number eleven, behold, everyone that is proud and abase him. And so we uh, we see that challenge, that encouragement, not to be caught up in the prideful, uh, but to remain humble uh, before uh, before God. And then it says that God will be the one that will uh, uphold thee, that God will raise up. In verse number uh, fourteen, there he says, "Then will I also confess unto thee that thine own right hand can save thee." And so, uh, just be mindful of, uh, of just be uh, mindful of this fact that uh, uh, God uh, resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. We see in the New Testament, uh, and so remain humble. It is God that lifts lifts us up. And so we don't need to lift our own selves up. Just remain humble before God. Remain humble in the sight of God, and God will lift us up. Okay, now uh, we're going to look at verse number uh, 15 in just a minute here. I think I've got a sneeze coming on. <coughs> That's probably not going to be the last one, uh, but we'll see how it goes here. Verse number Goodness gracious. Wow. I must be allergic, getting, becoming allergic to snow or something. I don't know. Uh, but hopefully that's it on the sneezing here. We'll see. Uh, the kids are kind of watching on the other side of the camera. Is that going to be it on the sneezes, you think? No. Okay, so they do not have faith. They think more sneezes are to come. But we'll see. All right, verse number 15. Behold now, behemoth 
which I made with thee, he eateth grass as an ox. And so just uh, as we think about this creature, know that this is an actual uh, literal creature that is uh, that God has created. Thank you, Brian and Cindy, for the God bless you there. Appreciate that. Uh, but the behemoth here is actually a literal creature, uh, a, literal, a literal creation by God, just like how God has mentioned several animals. Uh, in recent uh, chapters here, this is uh, an actual literal animal. Now, it might not be in existence today. It might be extinct today, uh, and there is some discrepancy on all of that. So let's look at this description and see if it matches up with any of our uh, any of our animals that are upon the face of the earth today. Okay, it says, "Lo, now." His strength is in his loins, and his force is in the uh, navel of his belly. And so we see uh, this is a powerful creature. His strength is in his loins. Uh, uh, speaking of his stomach muscles there in verse number 16, and uh, being a tremendous creature of strength and power. Uh, there are some that would say that this, that this creature uh, would be potentially the, uh, the elephant, uh, or the hippopotamus, uh, and and so on. So there's some that would believe uh, that would believe that, uh, but uh, I I am not fully convinced on the elephant and the hippopotamus. As we'll continue, it says he moveth his tail like a cedar. Okay, uh, cedar being a tree, being a great uh, a big tree, and so he moveth his tail like a cedar. And so would that mean that his tail is uh, is as big as a, a cedar? Would it be a big, large tail, uh, potentially? Uh, the sinews of his stones are wrapped together. Uh, and so as we think about even that tail tying in with the muscles that he would have in his stomach and his loins, obviously uh, to control a large tail, he would have to have tremendous uh, uh, muscles there on his hind end. And so if we think, if we would say that his tail is that of a cedar, he moving his tail like a cedar would be the size of a cedar. Uh, an elephant's tail is not big, a hippo's tail, uh, no. And so that would not fit the descriptions here. And so that's just kind of a, a, a lot of Bible scholars believe that it's a hippo, believe that it's the elephant. Uh, and those are the biggest land animals, I guess, that we would have right in existence now. But uh, just be mindful of this, that uh, in the days of Job, dinosaurs may have still been, what we call dinosaurs today, uh, would have still been alive upon the earth. And we know that they have tremendous tails, uh, many of them, like the uh, brontosaurus and so on, those the, the long neck type creatures. Uh, so let's continue to look, though, uh, at this description and see if it fits. We know that he was a grass eater. Uh, we know that his tail, uh, he moved like that of a cedar. Uh, let's look once again at uh, verse number 17. The sinews of his stones are wrapped uh, together. And so uh, his, uh, uh, his leg muscles, his thighs be very, uh, very tight together. The sinews being that which holds the muscles to the bones and all of that. Uh, and so it would appear that this is not a very uh, agile creature. Uh, because in large, in, in a big reason, because of his size, uh, his bones are as strong pieces of brass. Uh, his bones are like bars of iron. So this is a solid creature as well. Uh, verse number nineteen: He is the chief of the ways of God. Uh, he that made him can make his sword to approach unto him. Uh, and so we see uh, this being a, uh, a creature that uh, uh, is tremendous in size. It says, he that made him can make a sword to approach unto him. Who can destroy this creature? Uh, uh, the creator uh, can destroy this creature. Uh, we, we look, continue, I mean, you look, consider it's the chief of the ways of God. Uh, verse number 20, surely the mountains bring him forth food uh, where all the beasts of the field play. Uh, he lieth under the shady trees uh, to get out of the sun, obviously, uh, and in, in the covert of the reed and fence. And so uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, animal hides in the shade trees. It finds in mar it hides in marshy areas. It hides underneath the trees that would, uh, would give it shade and would give it cover. Verse 22, the shady trees cover him with their shadow. The willows 
of the brook. It compassed him about. And so uh, this creature would hide in wetland type areas, uh, in the marshy areas, uh, and uh, would hide underneath willow trees and the like. And so uh, this creature obviously getting out of the sun, uh, desiring to remain cool, uh, would seem to indicate maybe uh, that this uh, creature may have a tendency to overheat in the sun uh, and all of that. And so maybe this creature is reptilian uh, in nature as well. And so needed to regulate its body temperature by being out of the sun and being in, uh, in the cooler areas potentially. Uh, and so that's something to consider uh, and think about as well. I'm not saying that it is reptilian. It could be mammalian uh, in nature as well. I don't know. Uh, it says, verse 23, Behold, he drinketh up a river. Uh, and hasteth not, uh, he trusteth that he can draw up Jordan into his mouth. And so the size of this creature, it may have had a, a big mouth uh, and could take in large sums of water. Uh, this might be more uh, not a literal so much description of the fact that he could drink up a whole river, uh, but just uh, stating that he's got a big mouth. Uh, oh, oh, and, and you think a hippo does have a big mouth? An elephant has the trunk in which it can take up water in. A dinosaur, I'm sure, uh, could take up plenty of water as well. And then verse number 24, He taketh it with his eyes, and his nose pierceth through snares. And so what's being described here is that this animal is a smart animal. It is not easily deceived. It is not easily taken up in a snare. Uh, uh, and so it, it is able to figure out the traps and so on. Uh, so it is a smarter uh, creature as well. Can see with his eyes. Uh, and then also with his nose, uh, he can smell. Uh, and he's got uh, wisdom in regards to the snares. Okay, and so uh, why does God s share all of this? Uh, once again, he is showing his power. Uh, he is showing his creative nature. Uh, he, is, he is noting that, uh, as he said here about, in verse number 20, that he is the chief of the ways of God. He that made him can make his sword to approach unto him. And God is the creator of it. God is the one that gave it its life. God is the one that could take its life. Okay, uh, And a creature of this size is not to be messed with as well. We know uh, and have probably seen videos or documentaries on elephants that have maybe uh, uh, gone rogue and how, how easily they can uh, uh, toss and uh, move individuals out of their way and they're not to be messed with. Uh, hippos are very dangerous creatures as well. Uh, and so they're not to be messed with. And then uh, I don't know if that's what the, these cre what the behemoth is being described as. It may be a dinosaur-like creature as well, which would be very powerful uh, and not to be messed with uh, as well. And so, I don't know. This just speaks to the uh, awesome creative powers of God uh, and just the uh, just God saying, "Hey, uh, I've created this." Uh, and and then you think about this, the fact that God can create something like that, but then cares about us as human beings. Uh, and, and we are the, uh, the apple of, of, of his eye, uh, and he desires a personal relationship, relationship with us. And that is something to truly think about. Uh, and then I know uh, uh, we're themed here kind of uh, in regards to pride and humility. Uh, God is the one uh, that... Uh, uh, that lifts us up. And so let me just encourage you, don't toot your own horn. Uh, allow God to be the one to build you up. Remain humble in his sight. Okay, uh, we're going to end there today. We're going to look at another creature tomorrow uh, in chapter number 41, uh, that creature being Leviathan. And we'll uh, give you a few uh, thoughts on that, a few comments on that, on what specifically that creature may be, uh, and look forward to that tomorrow. Uh, but until then, let's remain faithful to the Lord today. Let's be sure to be in, uh, in God's house tonight for services. We'd love to see you at 6 o'clock. All right, let's greet those who have commented live. Brian and Cindy, good morning to you. Have an awesome day. Cliff and Karen, good morning to you both. Uh, thank you for being on. Gene, good morning and have a great day. Ingrid, good morning. Love you and have a great day as well. Charlie and Marsha, good morning to you both. Uh, Brian and Cindy, once again, thank you for that comment after my sneezes. Uh, and then David, good morning to you as well. And 
My kids were wrong. I only sneezed twice. And so, but you watch. I'll close it down, close out our video here, and I'll probably start sneezing again, but that's okay. Lord bless you all. Lord willing, we'll see many of you tonight. No matter where you're watching from, be sure to get into the house of God uh, tonight for an evening, for a midweek service, and uh, spend some time in prayer, and spend some time in studying the Word of God. All right, we'll touch base again tomorrow. Have a great day.